Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. Um, this is um, a question number seven from my own little mix of uh, a paper which I made from the June 2009, the old C1 and C2 at Excel papers. I mixed them around so I'd get one paper which has all the P1 type of questions in it and the, the other paper with all the P2 questions in it. Well, this is the P1 section. And I also chose questions from other places to make the whole thing add up to 75 marks. And uh, this is a question I found from an old, old paper somewhere. And um, I've added this to it. And one of the students has asked me to answer this question. So um, I'm going to do so. This is question number seven from my remix of this. Um, I call it the remix of the GCE June 2009 C1 and C2 papers. And I've called it P1. Um, you now all this this code is all for the new papers now. It just started in in January two thousand and nineteen, but I just uh, just labelled it that because it's like a P one style paper. Now, question number seven here. It says a major sector L O M of a circle with center O and radius R has the angle L O M equals theta radians as shown in Figure two. The perimeter of the sector is P centimeters and the area of the sector is A centimeters. Write down in terms of R and theta expressions for P and A. Okay, so that's pretty simple. Um, just have to regurgitate the formulae. Uh, we know that the area of a sector in when the angle is given in radians is a half R squared theta and the perimeter of a sector is the length of the arc plus these two radiuses and the length of the arc is given by r theta. So the perimeter is r theta plus 2 times r. Okay, so those, that's the that's for the area. I'll just write it in the right place here. So we know that a is equal to half r squared theta. And p is equal to um, r theta plus 2 times the radius. So thus, it look, looks like an n there. Those are the formulae for the area and for the perimeter of this sector. Then it says, given that r equals 2 root 2 and p equals a, show that theta equals 2 over root 2 minus 1. Okay, so now we know that r is 2, two root 2, so I'll replace the r's with 2 root 2, and we know that p equals a, so the perimeter and the area equals, so I'll basically equate these two equations with each other, so I'll say that r theta, so instead of, I'll just write it down, r theta plus 2r is the same as a half, r squared theta. So instead of r, I'm going to write 2 root 2. So I have 2 root 2 times theta plus 2 times 2 root 2 equals a half times 2 root 2 squared theta. Okay, so let's simplify this. Um, so we're going to have 2 root 2 theta plus 4 root 2 is equal to a half times. This is going to give you 2 squared, which is 4 times root 2 squared which is 2 theta so you end up with 2 root 2 theta plus 4 root 2 equals a half times 4 is 2 that gives you 4 theta 4 theta yeah that's right so now we can bring the thetas together um, let's just put 4 four times root 2 equals 4 theta minus 2 root 2, two theta so I brought the thetas together and I'm going to take out theta as a common factor. So I have theta, and I'll have, in fact, I could take 2 theta as a common factor, and I'll have 2 theta minus um, root 2. 2 theta minus root 2. Yeah, that's right. So I'm going to have 4 theta minus 2 root 2 theta. So I have 2 theta minus root 2, and I have on this side 4 root 2. Let me now divide. Um, sorry, that's 2 minus root 2, sorry. I've taken out the theta. 2 theta, I've taken out 2 theta as common, so 2 theta times 2 is 4 theta, and 2 theta times a minus root 2 will give you um, minus 2 root 2 theta. So I've taken out 2 theta as common from these two, and so now I can, um, I can get rid of this common factor of 2 here and there. So I've got 2 root 2 equals theta times 2 minus root 2. And now I can divide both sides by uh, 2 minus root 2. So I'll end up with theta equals 2 root 2 over 2 minus root 2. 
Now, what we have to show looks entirely different in this. Okay, and it's something a bit strange here because normally they ask you to express something with the denominator um, rationalized, but look what it, it looks like it's the numerator that's been uh, rationalized. Okay, so it's a bit of an odd question, but maybe it's just testing you on your understanding of what to do. You, you wouldn't get this from the calculator, you see. Maybe it's a, a way of testing to see who knows how to do this without using the calculator because sometimes when you have these type of questions, it ends up coming out correct in your calculator. Now, if you want to be sure that you haven't um, you know, got, got off on the wrong track, you can use your calculator to see if these two have give you the same value and then you know they're correct and then you can proceed and, and try to manipulate this so it looks like that. Okay. Um, you could do that. Well, let's just try that and see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to put uh, what I have first in, which is 2 root 2 over 2 minus root 2. 2 minus root 2. Okay, that gives me 2 plus 2 root 2. So I'll just write this down here somewhere. 2 plus 2 root 2. So this is 2. Oops. This is 2 plus 2 root 2. That's the value of what we got there. All right, and then two plus two root two, that's right. So let's see what happens when I put this in here. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be a one here, and that's gonna be root two. Let's get rid of that two there. Okay, so root two minus one of the denominator, and the numerator has just a two on it. So I'll delete that. Okay, and see what we get. Two plus two root two, exactly the same thing. So I know that what I've done so far is correct. It's exactly the same value, but I have to manipulate it to make it look like that. Now, what you need to do at this stage is just stop and think. You think Hold on a second. This is odd because here they have the denominator is irrational and the numerator is rational. So it looks like they have rationalized the numerator. Okay, they've rationalized the numerator and that's not the simplest form. That's not how you're supposed to leave something, but that's what they've done and that's what... Um, we are supposed to, they didn't say write in its simplest form, they just said show that theta equals this. So they're testing your understanding of third. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to rationalize the numerator, because okay, it's, it's rational, and then if, this is, if these are the same, it should come out to be exactly the same thing, because we know that they're the same value. So let me rationalize the numerator and see what happens. So I'm going to multiply the numerator by root 2, that will rationalize it, so I have to multiply the denominator also by root 2. This is going to give me 2 times uh, 2, which is 4, because root 2 times root 2 is 2, divided by, and this is going to give me 2 root 2 minus, and root 2 times root 2 is going to be 2. Okay, so I'm left with 4 over 2 root 2 minus 2. I can see there's a common factor in the denominator of 2, which I can take out. I'll have 2 times root 2 minus 1, and the 2 and the 4 cancel, and you're left with exactly what we're supposed to show 2 over root 2 minus 1 okay so I hope that was uh, quite clear there so basically when you get to this stage here okay you probably think hold on I can't find I can't make it like this if you try to rationalize the, the denominator of course you won't get that because that's an irrational denominator so then you think to yourself, well, the numerator is rational and the denominator is rational. So they've done the opposite. They've rationalized the numerator, and that's exactly what happens. Uh, so if you rationalize your numerator, you get exactly what they asked you to find. Okay, so that's a bit of a strange question. I have seen that for the first time. It's an old question. But who knows if, you know, one of the examiners wants to put something like that again. So it's a good like way for you to just uh, get this bit of understanding, experience of a new type of question, maybe... That might happen again. They're testing you on your on knowledge of how to deal with thirds, and they've actually rationalized the numerator instead of the denominator here, and they're testing to see if you know how to manipulate them. Okay, and of course your calculator will never give you this answer because the calculator will always give you a rational denominator. So maybe that's a way to see who knows how to do these things without relying on the calculators. All right. So next is part C. It says express theta in the form a plus b root 2 where a and b are integers to be found so now they want you to rationalize that so i'm going to bring it over here and then we'll continue okay so we were um we have to rationalize this now it says express theta in this form so now it's going to be rationalized so that's what we have to do now so this is how it really should be expressed so 
So you've got root 2 minus 1. So to rationalize the denominator, we multiply it by the conjugate, which is root 2 plus 1. That will get rid of the thirds from the denominator. Therefore, we have to multiply the numerator by root 2 plus 1. Because here we have a difference of squares, you could say, and the middle term will disappear, and the middle term would be the root 2s. So you've got theta equals, that's going to be 2 times a root 2 plus 2 times 1, which is 2, over, and this will be root 2 times root 2, which is 2, minus 1. The middle term will disappear. It will be plus root 2 minus root 2, which will go. So now we're left with uh, 2 root 2 plus 2 over 1, okay, which is in the form that we need. We can just rewrite it as 2 plus 2 root 2. As we saw, that was a value that we found from our calculator, but you have to show how it's done. Okay, you can't just write the answer down. That was the answer that we saw, if you remember. I was I told you to check to see whether they're the same value, what we found, to see that we're in the right tracks. It was 2 plus 2 root 2. And that's exactly what we found. Um, this to be in the end, of course. But you have to show the step of rationalizing the denominator. So there we have the answer to part C. And this answer to the question is concluded. It's part A, very simple. Part C, very simple. Part B, you just have to think a little bit about the form that they gave it to you in and you think okay this form they have rationalized a numerator and it's not how it should be in the end and in the end they've given you um, the task of, of writing in its proper simplest form with a rational denominator so there's the answer to that question for the student that asked and i hope that was understandable thank you for watching